Well, Engineers Australia is playing an increasing role in terms of making sure that the practice standards in Australia are benchmarked to international levels. Engineers Australia um, is playing an increasing role in terms of the International Engineering Alliance, the various accords that, uh, that university programs are required to be compliant with, um, and playing, fulfilling a, a major role in terms of supporting these international standards uh, via our organisation. Uh, we're also internally, more than ever before, um, setting our own standards in terms of uh, what it means to be a chartered professional engineer and we've very much broadened the definition as to what it means to be a competent practicing engineer so that we embrace some of the softer skills, communication, teamwork, leadership, um, rather than simply a focus on some of the technical attributes of what it means to be, uh, be an engineer. And internally at Engineers Australia, through our subsidiary business, Engineering Education Australia, we're increasingly linking up with industry and the employers of engineers to make sure that we can develop programs that industry and those employers are looking to deliver to their own employees so that we can have uh, engineers that are well skilled and well trained and competent to be able to practice at the levels that we set through our chartered professional engineering program. The challenge with a profession in how it maintains its ethical uh, position and its integrity is all encompassing. Why is that? Because the fundamentals haven't changed from the first day a profession was created. There is a real sense when you're dealing with a professional that trust is important. It, it's not negotiable. Our responsibility in leading the profession is to well equip our members, always to remind them of the fundamental elements of integrity, but also to equip them that at times when they believe there is an ethical question or a potential challenge to them, how can they respond? Uh, as well as a profession, it is expected that when behaviour does not match to the expectations, and it's not only the expectations of the profession but also of the broader community, then action is taken and an appropriate action against a particular member or firm. Ethics and discipline haven't actually changed in the expectations, but where we need to be ahead of the game is ensuring that there is clear transparency around what occurs on ethics and integrity and that the monitoring happens in a timely way and when behaviours don't marry up to those expectations, then swift and important action is taken. The changes in disciplinary processes uh, have not really changed insofar as the outcomes for lawyers. If they, if, if they break the conduct rules, you know, they're open to lose their practising certificates. Uh, We've, we have to put this in context. In Victoria, 19,000 lawyers, 12,000 practising, 2,000 complaints, 240 cases going to VCAT, which is the current tribunal dealing with disciplinary matters, 40 of which are serious, um, and two of which might lose their practising certificate. So, it's, it, and, that, and probably those ratios have not changed over that 20 years. Um, originally the Law Institute had its own tribunal but there were lay members of that tribunal and successively that's now moved across to our Civil Disputes Tribunal which is VCAT. Uh, in terms of credentialism, the Law Institute initiated a specialisation program uh, some 10 years ago. We now have 900 specialists and the LIV promotes the brand of legal specialists in Victoria. In terms of ongoing professional development, there is a regulatory um, continuing professional development compliance scheme and lawyers have to do now, since 2004, 10 hours of that sort of training every year. It full, and there are specific requirements around substantive law, and um, business practice, uh, ethics and well-being that are built into those 10 hours. Um, we expect further changes with the introduction of the uniform law and uh, I, we do know that there are quite significant differences in that requirement uh, to other professions. 
But most lawyers will tell you that those CPD hours that they do are nothing compared with the personal study or other types of self-education that they undertake.